Well, the last few days have been incredibly wet and rainy, um, which has given me a chance to spend a bit of time in the shed and do a little bit of welding, which has been really good. So I've made this uh, carryall to make the tractor a little bit more versatile. It's just basically a platform that can raise and lower. Um, and as the name might, you know, the carryall, as that might suggest, it's just for carrying stuff around the farm. So now at the front, I've got a front end loader, um, forks that can move pallets around, and of course a shovel for soil. Um, but I didn't have anything on the back to take advantage of the three point linkages, so I made this up. Now, there, on the internet, there are some free plans available. Uh, Curraglen Industries have made those available per, for people for free. They do sell some other products there. I'm not affiliated with them at all, but um, they do have plans for this. And if you like the look of it, we'll put the, we'll put the link in the description for the video and you can, um, you can go find it. So if you can weld, um, I think this is you know, a pretty straightforward project and gives you some idea of um, what's there. We'll have a, I didn't do it exactly according to plan. We'll have a look at some of the, um, you know, the things that make it up. But just while it's like this at the moment, you can see that I've ratchet strapped this um, IBC, Intermediate Bolt Carrier or Container, you know, onto the back here. I cut it down earlier, um, just ran in, cut it down, it's very, very straightforward to, to do. And then I also just got some polyethylene irrigation pipe because we've been blessed with a bit of a rubbish pile that's, <laughs> that's got uh, all that sort of stuff on there. I just, I just topped it off um, with that irrigation pipe. I split it and then it was a little bit involved but heated it to get it around those corners. And then I've just used wire ties here to, to secure it. So now all of the rough edges that you know could cause nicks or cuts or whatever, they're protected. And also it's a lot more comfortable if you're reaching over to get things, you know, you're not going to get snagged up on a bit of cut metal. So that's a nice little refinement. So at the moment I've just been I've been wanting to throw things in and, and not have stuff fall out of the side of it. But normally um, you know when I was if I was using this carry-all for fencing um, or you know picking up tree limbs and stuff like that. I might use it without this, but it's quite handy just to have that on there. Of course, an IBC, I can also shut that valve, which I've got open, so if it's out there, it can fill up with rain. I can shut that and actually fill that up with fluids if I want to. So that makes that uh, usable as a sort of ballast. I can throw all sorts of heavy things in there. So when I'm using the front end loader, um, when I get a, a big full load in the shovel, um, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not picking my weight up you know, off these back tyres and losing traction. All of this stuff was in the cut list, okay? I did that according to the plans um, that are free online and in the description to the video. I did do a few different things. Um, across the back, the bracing was supposed to be um, some of, you know, like uh, some of this metal flat bar just going all the way across. Uh, I've just made it an, an H pattern here. I think that's um, strong enough. Um, I used 50, me 50 millimeter, you know, two inch square um, mesh, wire mesh here. That just helps, you know, it's like gives me something to tie on, make sure things don't fall through. Um, it's plenty strong. On these, I've only welded it every, um, you know, every second mesh along here. But of course, on the bottom one, I've welded it every single one and down through the middle in the bracing here as well. And that's just so if I pop some, you know, it still maintains that strength. So this mesh is quite strong because it's, it's, it's pulling back this way. Up here where the, where the top linkage goes, in the plans it said just to, um, you know, weld these bits up here to take the, the inner pin. Of course, I just wanted to put a plate. I welded an actual plate in there first and then welded those uh, in just to, just to spread the loading a little bit. So the floor, the same, it's just that 50 mil square mesh. You might be thinking, oh, well, I'd like it a little bit more heavy duty and you might want to put um, checker plate or solid steel if you're going to build one of these, or even put um, 150 mil sleepers through here, you know, some timber, that would definitely be very, very strong. Uh, I didn't do that. I wanted this mesh because it can be used as a garden screen where you can back this up and throw shovels of compost and stuff like that and the big, you know, big twigs and sticks can be taken out and only small bits will fall through. Um, it prevents rust, okay, because this is very, very um, self-draining um, and, you know, of course I painted it with a nice epoxy uh, paint here to try and prevent rust. 
so you know, no water can gather in here. My class one linkage on the back of this um, 31 horsepower tractor, it can lift uh, almost a ton at the pins. Out here, you know, leverage, not quite so much. So that's another thing, These, this mesh, it's not gonna have to take massive, massive weight, but you know, it can, it can take a, well, what am I? I'm about 86 kilos, so it can definitely take that you know, point loaded on there, a little bit of bending, but you know, no big deal. So a couple of drums or a fence spinner, um, whatever you want, carted around in here, no worries at all. Around the edges here, again, with that polyethylene um, irrigation pipe that we've been blessed with in our rubbish pile, a 13 mil, a half inch stuff. I split that around and just put it on the edge. Just, this is where most of the wear would be because you're always sliding things on, those IBCs sliding on and off. And I wanted to protect the paint um, as much as possible because once the paint goes, this is made out of mild steel and then, then you know, we might run a risk of corrosion. Down here, I also put a very, very lightweight uh, towing tongue. All right, so I can just stick a, just a standard towing ball that normally goes on my draw bar there. So if I want to leave the carry all here and also tow something fairly lightweight, I can use that. If I had my time over again, maybe I would extend that bar all the way back to here. But in reality, this is quite resistant to being deformed because you've got a, a bit of um, quite sturdy angle iron here, and then you've got these welded supports going back. So really, you have to bend you know, this amount of steel. Maybe it'll happen, but you know, it's, a, it's a bit of working kit. So that was just a, a tongue of steel, and I just popped an old shackle that I'd lost the pin. I welded that in there so I got somewhere the chain to go on. That wasn't in the plans. This bit here wasn't in the plans. And also in the plans, they leave it entirely up to you what, whether you fill this in and what you're going to make the floor out of. And of course, none of this, um, they weren't suggesting that you use any scrap irrigation tube to, <laughs> to make a little rubbing plate there. The strength of this thing comes from the, the H construction. Uh, this stuff, this 50 by 75 box um, rectangular section, that's pretty strong. And then we've got a 45 degree, uh, you know, 25 millimeter wide bit of flat bar coming down here and that gives some nice support there so it does feel pretty sturdy you know this doesn't flex that much and most of the movement is being transferred straight back to the tires of the tractor so it's a really handy thing it only took me you know a couple of days to make it cost a couple of hundred dollars worth of steel everything's getting a bit more expensive nowadays you're not going to save that much money now um it, it's hard to get this sort of stuff at the moment. It's hard to get a lot of things at the moment. So what I got out of making this myself is time on a welder. So it built up my skills again. Um, obviously I've, I've welded in the past, but it's been a long time. You know, I've been just mucking around on a yacht. So it was good to do a little bit of steel fabrication. So what I got for my money was a, a build up of skills again, the satisfaction of making something that's good and strong. The other reason why a lot of these carryalls and things made out of steel are very affordable at the moment is a lot of them are made offshore, you know, in places like China and stuff like that, where the, the labor is very, very cheap. I want to support the idea of doing stuff for myself rather than you know, outsourcing to the lowest, uh, lowest bidder. So yes, I know that there's people out there that are saying, well, you know, it, it's only, you know, five, $600 to buy a carry-all and why don't you just, you know, like factor in your time and just go and buy one. I'm much happier having made one. So this white poly line that's 
hooked onto this live bit of fence and it just goes through a couple of um, little isolators up there and you can also see that we've got a step in post holding it this is acting like a gate so this is electrified at the moment so this PVC obviously is an insulator but this little one's got a metal hook on it so it's making this live we'll take that off and that has deactivated the fence <laughs> and we can just unhook that obviously so now um, we can move this gate out the way and we can move all the stuff for the chooks through. So we're moving these ladies today. They've done a really great job. They've been here for about two and a half, three weeks. And before they were here, it was all rooted around, mounded up by the pigs. And they've done a good job of scratching everything down and flattening it out. And so we're moving them onto a new um, patch where the pigs have just been. And then today we're going to broadcast some um, regenerative seed mix here to try and grow back some better pasture. So before we move this, we'll just disconnect the water. Um, we've got their on-demand feeder. This is, a, this is an easy thing to move. I filled this up um, the other day and it's been raining like crazy. These chooks are suddenly very noisy. I think there's going to be some treats. But um, look at that, nice and dry. There's still water on the lid. And all of these are nice and dry. So We've been really happy with, um, with making this and we just put a link to that video where, where we did make it just now. But I'm going to move all this over there. This will be the easy bit. <laughs> that will be a bit more of a challenge. I'm almost tempted to hook it up to the tractor, but very easy temptation. Maybe it's food. What's the egg count? Four, and well, this one's still warm, and then three, so they all laid. How's their eggshells? They're getting harder. They were quite, they were quite um, brittle when we first got the chickens, so getting stronger now. We've had some really wet and some really frosty uh, nights and mornings and this is why the pigs don't mind it. They've, they've come in here and they've made this beautiful nest <laughs> and it's lovely dry soil here. This tree's got signs of being used as a scratching post. So this might not be too great for us but um, from a pig's point of view it's fantastic. So this has been good. They've been incorporating a lot of this matter um, you know, into the soil it's pretty good. It looks like a bit of mayhem here, but it's, um, they're doing what they're supposed to do. You know, they're a, they're a forest animal, so we're pretty happy with this. The only other, the, our only other option with this stuff would have been to burn it, but to actually having having pigs turn it, go through, get all the centipedes out. There, there were some pretty bright centipedes living in this stuff. Um, all of that. I think they're. She's just laid down for more pats while you're talking. I think you've been doing a good job. Yeah, this one's um, this one always wants pats. It's never ending. It's never ending with you. Is it? What's been really great with these pigs and their regular moves, um, and being able to live as as close to a, a wild pig as they as we can manage, is they don't smell. They maintain their hygiene really well. It's it's total slander to say pigs are dirty animals. Like these are considering they like lying in dirt. They're <laughs> they're always clean. And since we've got them, their coat, we've noticed that it's become more shiny. So, yes, hello. Hello. 
this is this is the pat me grunting. No biting, no. <laughs> biting is bad. No, no, no. Good pig. These two, these two were the first ones that sort of became domesticated and mm. wanted to have pats all the time. So they're very, tr they're very trusting pigs. Oh, here's the scratching tree. See. Mm. <laughs> Oh, we go. It's going for a scratch. Oh. And a scratch. This is the wrong end of a pig to be at. Oh, hello. How's the tree? Got a scratch there. Mm. There we go. The scratching tree. Ooh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Goodness, one of our favorites is on heat. Come on, Basky. <laughs> we need to find them a boar. 